sending them the call, like uh, what information we receive, to make sure we get a CIT officer to go handle that call. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. So, all so you guys. And how are those training done? Like, when they do it, they all the new recruits now that go through the academy? Yeah, the, at, yeah, that's a requirement. So that's why eventually all the officers will be CIT certified um, as, they, as they start coming through the academy. And then they have a recertification class that we take every two years. Um, now, I know if there's, what is it, North Vegas, there's North Las Vegas, has a uh, separate department, uh, and that, is it statewide, or is it going to be, what's that, the CIT? Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know how other agencies uh, use the program. I would imagine they would use it too because it's a useful tool to help officers in, in certain prices. Um, I don't know if we had any like, in or We don't train them. I don't think we train any other agencies. Uh, they might have their own training that I'm aware of. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not aware of it. No, it's doing it. No, it's the CIT, the CIT training is that the basis time of the domestic. Uh, the Memphis was one that initiated the program, and they set the standards. Now, is there like set of standards for you guys? Write your own standards now, and what's expected to be done, like in the training program. Yeah, there, yeah, there's certain we follow those sort of standards. You know, we're not out to make our right, own. Okay, because they're going to be paid from what? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah it's department wide. We all get the same training, um, right. and it's. Just, uh, wherever they got the training from, this is what we call it. Okay. Now, when you guys go out and say deal with the homeless issue, you know, is that considered to be a price extension because a lot of the homeless seem to have... Not necessarily, because there, there's a lot of homeless out there that don't have any mental disorders or that are still mentally stable, but we do run into a lot of homeless that are not mentally stable. Um, and one reason they're not is because they can't get their medications. Because when they're homeless, it's hard to go, go get your medications. You need to stay on top and take your medications. So that's why we run into a little more instances with the homeless, because they're just they're not able to get meds to stay on them. So we actually have a homeless liaison who helps out with um, people who have problems when it comes to shelter and things like that. Uh, that's a totally separate entity because the mental health issue is different. CIT is more of a people who are in crisis at the moment. Can, can I ask a question real quick? Yes, is it an actual policy for you guys to stop and ticket or arrest homeless anytime you can, or is that just kind of a, uh, a de facto thing? No, we don't go out to try to arrest homeless just because they're homeless. The only time we arrest homeless is if they're breaking the law. And that's the same with any person. Okay, if they're breaking the law, then we're going to draw attention to them. A lot of times we warn people first, then we cite them, and then if they keep doing the same thing, then we arrest people. So, a lot of times, like I deal a lot with the homeless over here in the homeless corridor, and I know a lot of them by first name, I, I talk to them every day, and you know, a lot of it has to do with safety issues, um, and people are out on the street, like, and other cars are driving in the roads, and they're going to try to solicit for money. We're not there to try to keep them from trying to make you know, some type of money to help them figure it out. It's more of, you have some mom driving to school to drop her kids off, she doesn't, she doesn't see someone in the road, and she runs over someone, that's tragic for someone that gets the person gets run over, and for the person driving. So we want to keep stuff like that from happening. And you know, there's other like different health issues and stuff as far as, uh, I, uh, some of those that use dark drugs and stuff, and they have stuff like that. So that's why they get arrested. They don't get arrested because they're homeless. Okay. Now, when you say you cite them, that's you run a citation. Now, does that usually come with a fine or, or how is that? Yeah, so for example, like, you know, someone is uh, in the roadway. It's against the law to be in the roadway. Uh, like, right, walking down Bonanza here. 
So a lot of times we'll write him a citation to go see a judge and say, hey, you know, we observed this and they were standing in the roadway and it's against the law. They go see a judge, they can either pay a fine or do some type of community service or whatever it may be. Or, or we can, yeah, it can exactly, you can be a warning. It's just a, okay, a warning that we can say, look, we talked to you about this already. Okay. So either getting to an area or getting to court or paying a fine might be almost impossible to do so kind of push them into a system where they you know, really have no way of working themselves out of. No. Um, a lot of the homeless that want help and that uh, have why to take care of you know, they're responsible for what their, their actions. They have no problem doing that. The, some of the people that don't want to, um, don't want any help, you'd be surprised how many people don't want help. Um, we're really out there to help them. Nine out of ten times, I really try to get someone off the streets into the shelter, um, into housing, rather than running a citation or taking them to jail. Because, like you said, it, it is kind of, if, if that's all we do, then that's all they'll be. It's just a you know, revolving door. They just keep doing the same thing, they're not getting any help. And I work with our community learning policing squad, and our whole purpose is to try to help the homeless get off the streets, get shelters. We have work programs. There's all kinds of um, opportunities out there for them. But a lot of them tell me, you know what, I just want to sleep on the streets. I don't want shelter. I don't want anything. I, I feel uncomfortable. Some people get comfortable where they're at. They don't want to, they don't want to help. And we can't force people. You know, I can't help those that don't want to help. But the few that want help, we get them housing, we get them to work programs, we get them off the streets. You know, we have a lot of success, success stories where people were homeless a couple years, now they actually have jobs, they have their own apartments. So it's out there. It's just a matter of a matter of kind of educating some of them. You know, what's out there. You know, unfortunately, you know, people's pride get in the way. I mean, let's face it, you know, you go through hard times. It's kind of embarrassing to say, I lost everything. Um, uh, this is, uh, you work in this area? Yeah, downtown area. Um, are you familiar with the downtown initiative? And what is that? Uh, Meredith? Yeah, for what is Meredith? Is, uh, is the name of that project? Well, she works with the Rangers. Yeah, the downtown Rangers. And they have You guys work in the hand? Yep. So anytime, like, they're, they're really good uh, resource for us because uh, they have a, a, a homeless liaison on themselves. Right, like, Meredith. Meredith, yes. And I work with Meredith, and a lot of times we come across the homeless, and I'll refer them to her so she can help them too. Um, we're constantly, we're constantly trying to get these people to get them off the street because it doesn't do anyone any good themselves or anyone if they're just out of I'm sorry, guys. I know I'm there. I know there's other questions. It's like we got time if you got more stuff. Oh, no. Well, I want to take a break here and rest. Uh, so, what do you guys do? <laughs> What's your interest in, uh, like, some of you got some, like, solutions or with the homeless or? I'm just trying to figure out where you guys are accountability. Well, well, in, in relation to the homeless, uh, a lot of the harassment they get from the police and from basically everybody, a lot of times when, when homeless are arrested or cited, then that builds a record, which I've heard, I've heard people say that, you know, there's a policy that, they, that they're supposed to build a record with homeless people so if they do something serious, then they can put them away for real time. No. Um, but what happens is now they have a record and now it's that much harder for them to get off, get off being homeless because now they can't get a job. Um, there's a little trigger kind of 
I, I kind of understand where it comes from. Um, but a lot of their crimes are misdemeanor crimes. Um, trespassing, open container, uh, jaywalking, stuff like that. Those, by no means, are going to keep anyone from getting a good job. Well, if you fill out a job application, it says, what have you been arrested for in the past, I think, two years? But, but most of this stuff so is, if you have they're this looking for gross misdemeanors or felonies on those job applications. A misdemeanor is a speeding ticket. I mean, have you ever got a speeding ticket? So you, mm -hmm. so if someone's not going to hire me because I got a speeding ticket, I guarantee they have a speeding ticket. Well, too. So if you have this laundry list of uh, uh, jaywalking within a residential neighborhood and that sort of thing, which I know for a fact happens with homeless people. No, it, it does, but at the same time, the law is the law. Okay, just because it's it selectively enforced. Are, if you keep jaywalking, so the law is not supposed to be selectively enforced. The, huh? the law isn't supposed to be selectively enforced. That's right. That's why everyone so, gets treated the same. Nine out of ten people who are jaywalking in a residential neighborhood aren't going to be stopped. The tenth person is likely to be homeless. And the excuse that they're being stopped for is the, that they're jaywalking. The reality is that they're being stopped because they're homeless. What are we going to do with the homeless person by, by arresting them? Well, that's the question. And then I just explained it to you. We, have, we even carry a community a contact card that has shelters on there. It has feeding times. It has shelters. A lot of these homeless people don't want to go to shelters. Right. Um, and then, but if they're not, if they're not actually harming anyone, no, I do. It's not a perfect world, right? right? right. Okay. You could get, you could, you, you could go with me right now. We go down the main floor, master. We get to stop ten people. Maybe one person that actually take your your um, your help, whatever it may be, because there's always some kind of bias that they had because they had. Maybe they did have a bad encounter at one of the shelters. Um, they're not perfect, but we got to start somewhere. So if that person's not actually harming anyone, should we really be making punitive actions against them? What do you mean? I mean, if 9 out of 10 people that you stop don't want help, if they're not actually harming anyone, if they're simply jaywalking in a residential neighborhood, should we really be citing or arresting them for that? Neighborhood. They're jaywalking on these three, four lanes right here. Mm -hmm. Because they're panhandling right here and they're cutting across traffic, causing accidents. But there are, there, if they're actually causing a problem, I mean, that's, what, that's a whole different issue than if they're walking in a residential neighborhood and that's against the law, so we're going to stop them for that because they're homeless, then that's a completely different issue. Well, it's not against the law to walk through a neighborhood. Well, there are people that have so, been, have been stopped it's inside. Obviously, some type of personal experience yes. that you know. I work with homeless quite a bit, and I see homeless people get harassed on a regular basis. Okay, where at? Everywhere. I, at the parks. Okay, that's 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 usually city. It's a city I see, I see them. City ordinances. Okay, I see them within the residential neighborhoods getting stopped for jaywalking. Okay, so a lot of those people get in trouble because they're uh, in I, the area that are only for children. Or they're trying at a bar. Which is which is really created in order to give people an opportunity to get harassed the homeless. Right. What is the what is the statute on, on the uh put the children in the park? Uh as you thought you can't be within you can't, if you don't have a child, you can't be within that area. Within and the child area. What's and these are public parks, correct? Right? Which are paid for by anybody who pays taxes. And they are kind of punitive then. And when you make these rules about having children. Well, children first of all, we don't make the rules. They have you to guys make the, the people make the rules. And so, but you still have to be able to. There's also an age restriction, correct? There's also an age restriction on the children. I'm not 100%. You do have discretion of whether you're going to sell. Um, import. That's not my jurisdiction in the park. City parks is the market. But you do have your discretion whether you you are going to enforce a certain rule. We have discretion on on uh, on misdemeanor offenses. Yes. So if I have someone that keeps committing the same offense after I've warned them several times not to do it and they keep doing it, then we give them a citation. They continue to do that. Then we give people opportunities. If you keep doing the same crime, it, it is against the law. So there, you have to take some responsibility. And that's the thing. A lot of these people, they don't care. They don't care about responsibility. So, I can't speak. It's not a perfect world. I can't sit here and say that I do A, B, and C every time. 
you know, each individual is going to be different every time. You know what I mean? But truly, we're out there just to, we really are out there to get the, a lot of the homeless off the streets. Because we're seeing now, maybe 10, 15 years ago, it was more like what you're suggesting. You know, it was a little bit, a little bit different the way we did policing. But now it's a little more uh, community-oriented policing where we're really trying to help these people because we see that if we can get them off the street, it'll reduce a lot of the crimes um, because they're now out there trying to survive. It really is. When you're homeless, it's a survival mode. Right. Okay. So, so in relation to that and to the survival mode, when homeless people are making camps in like a vacant lot or something, and you guys come by and give them five minutes to get everything they own, and if they don't get it, you guys throw it in the dumpster, and they first lose all, their all, possessions and their IDs, huh? and they lose like their IDs and their possessions and the stuff that they need to keep them warm during the cold winter. Can, I'll then explain that to you. How does that help them survive? How does I, that? I'll explain that to you. First of all, a lot of times that's private property. Okay, the owners are coming to us and they don't want the people there. We give them a 24-hour notice. We give them a, it's a little piece of paper that we give them. So hey, you have 24 hours to get off the property because you're trespassing. Um, if they don't do that within the 24 hours, when we do go over there, they have the opportunity to gather their stuff right then and there and take it. If they don't. A lot of the stuff that we take is because it's spoiled, um, has uh, blood, you know, urine, feces, and stuff like that. It's not healthy for them either. And that's where we kind of get into some of the mental um, issues where a lot of them are off their medications. And they don't realize that, you know, because they're attached to it. You know, if you growing up, you had, if you had a binky, you know, regardless if it was wet or whatever, that's your binky. You're gonna, you know, your blanket. You're gonna keep it. That's how some of these people feel, even though it's a hazard to them. So we let them take medication, IDs, and stuff like that. If they don't have their IDs. I can provide them, hey, you can go to Catholic Charities, they can help you get a birth certificate. You need to get an ID. That's what we do. If they don't do all that, then we guess. The owner, instead of taking the gel, we move them off the property. We take all the school stuff, the stuff that they don't need. Um, we take that. Right. So. Is that, is that I mean, to kind of confiscate that stuff that you deem to be dangerous or unhealthy? Yeah, because you'd be surprised how many people, have, I mean, well, the they got feces and stuff on their blankets and they're covering themselves up. Now, do you give, um, you know, usually when something gets done, maybe you usually get a receipt for the, the property that was taken. You guys get your receipts? So they can come back later at some time uh, oh, because it is a judgment call on the police, you know. And that's only if they go to if they get a, if they go to jail, then they'll get a uh, and we impound their property, then that's when we get their stuff. But this so this is different than impounding when you can take their stuff, and it's based on the individual police officers. Um, deception, um, you know, the worth of that, that person. But when we're actually doing a cleanup, cleanup, like when we bring out city, the rapid response, the rapid response team, and everyone's got all their stuff, they can take anything they can carry, and we give them a notice, anything they can carry, because there's no reason that someone should have 10 parts full of trash and all that stuff. Oh, you know, if, my, if, my if they can't, if they can't, judge it was another man's trash, but, you know, I Well, I know, that. I know, but if, where are you going to put it? If you don't know, I'm not trying to say it sound harsh, but if you don't have any property to store your stuff, and that's something we're working on, trying to get some facilities where people can kind of store their stuff, so they can go out and look for jobs, and you know, look for housing, because it's hard to get a job whenever you can grow up, you know what I'm saying? So, who's actually, who's working on that, like, what the park is, like, who you guys work with, you know, work with or that? City Council, we're trying to work with the City Council. A lot of this stuff, we have to um, go to the City Council for the voice of the people. Uh, and it's a, it's a 
uh, a slow, there's a hard process to get all this stuff, and we have to get all these different regulations. Uh, trust me, we're working for it. And, and through that, I mean, you guys actually... Uh, we actually have a homeless... Uh, we have a, uh, a homeless for a uh, meeting that we have uh, the first and third... Uh, Tuesday of every month. And that's where we have like Catholic Charity, Salvation Army. It's at our subsection, downtown area community. So we bring in the city, we bring in um, all those all those areas in the homeless quarter together so we kind of come up with plans on how to help the homeless. Um, I mean, is it open to me? Yeah. I mean, all organizations yeah. are able to come? Yeah. We're actually looking for, uh, you know, bringing some of the homeless into the meeting, too, so we get their perspective of some of the the hurdles that they're coming, they're, they're, they're going through. Um, so we know it's not perfect, but when you have certain organizations and they get their funding and they have to follow these rules, that's, you know, they have to go by these steps to get their money and then they have to follow these rules. So we're trying we're constantly trying to find different ways on how to resolve some of the issues. The biggest issue is a wet shelter. We need a wet shelter out here. A lot of these facilities, if you're intoxicated or if they feel that you're on some type of uh, narcotic, they won't let you in the shelters. Absolutely. You know what I'm so we're trying to why we brought up the frequency. You know, well, we sent them to the shelters, you know, shelters won't accept. And I'm pretty aware, I mean, if you're not for all, like, you know, it's a disease and a problem yeah. that, you know, I'm not getting that drinking. And, we, just can't and we understand that. We understand so, that. And we're, we're working on, that's something we're working on. Um, something else that we're trying to work on is maybe like a, a green area, you know, where the, the homeless can kind of go and kind of keep themselves. You know, while they're waiting, they can do their stuff and they go out and try to find jobs or whatever they have to try to do. But then again, you run into the problem where, you know, we, we provide a green area. Okay, who's going to police that? Make sure that all they're, they're doing, no one's doing any legal narcotics, no sexual assaults are happening, no fights are happening. So that's a, a, a hurdle that we have to kind of, you know, that's basic things. I mean, that's the general society. You know, has all these things that are going. But the homeless is not the police's problem. It's not. It's not something. It's not illegal to be homeless. Right. Right. We're just there when fights happen. We're there, yes, to police that. But it shouldn't be the police department. The whole goal to, you know, police an area that is provided for them. Unless, unless, unless issues pop up. Right. But I ideally, like sanitation. I because, like because otherwise we're like, okay, here, you're homeless, this has a place for you, but, you know, if you don't act right, I don't think that would be fair to the, the homeless. If, if, let's say we got an area, well, you can come here, but, you know, better watch it because the police are just waiting you know, for you to mess up. I don't think that would be kind of fair. No, and, and the, the homeless that I deal with, I seem to have that idea when you're in the public parks and stuff that, you know, that they're targeted. So this is, you know, where they also can find out exactly how you guys feel. Is individual not according to the policies? You know, we want individual guys, like, how do you feel, you know, when you deal one-on-one? -on -one, when I, I mean, deal on one-on-one, -on -one, my, my whole goal is to try to help them. My, when I deal with any any person on the street that's, that's uh, homeless or it might be their first day on the street, whatever it is, my whole goal, and that's and that's why I'm in the position I'm in, I'm in our community policing, is to help those people that are unfortunate and to give them a roadmap on how to help themselves. Okay, um, but there is a lot of there is a lot of hurdles. I've helped people get into uh, shelters and try to get jobs, but for some little rule at whatever facility they're staying in, they, they broke it or they didn't agree with it, so then they left, and then they're kind of back to square one again. Uh, and I, I can say that for all the police officers. We're not out there, oh, here, here's a quick ticket where I can take this person to jail. Um, we're there to keep the peace, and we're there to help people. That's why everyone took this job, is to help people. Um, and I think a lot of the issues is for some of the um, 
neighborhoods that don't realize they don't have an encounter with the homeless. They don't really treat them like people. You know, they don't look at them as, as people. And they have this perception um, that you're homeless, you're a bad person, you're doing drugs and all this. And there's a lot of good people out there that are homeless that are really good people. But, you know, they come in their neighborhood just like you know, someone comes into your house, you don't know who they are. They're going to be a little biased towards you at first until you get to know them. And that's just going to have to change a society, in my personal opinion, um, for that change to take place. And I think the police department is really doing a good effort to, to change that perception, perception of the homeless. Is there, uh, is there ongoing training that you all you know, with individual officers uh, dealing with them as a subset, because I, I know in, in um, immigrant communities, you know, there are people, you know, who are familiar with the ways and the people in the immigrant communities, so that they're more, um, they understand better the situation. Right. Like, like so you guys have, with the homeless, understanding homeless issues, and you guys have like an ongoing training? We, we, have, we have, within our community oriented policing squad, we have a heart team, which basically goes from the Hispanic community. Um, and then we have uh, a, a health team, which is the uh, homeless evaluation liaison uh, program. And then we have our chronic nuisance. So, like right now, I deal with the health team and also deal with our chronic nuisance. So, what's uh, chronic nuisance? Chronic nuisance, you know, your properties, like your businesses, you they have a, like your apartment complex. When there's constant um, calls for service there, uh, police are always going out there, and that, that's a chronic nuisance as far as, okay, there's suspicious uh, activity as narcotic sales or stuff like that. Any, and there's an NRS that defines chronic nuisance, it gets in more detail. But anytime we have repeat calls and repeat problems, it's a chronic That's what we have. Okay, so that, and that's a separate unit. Yeah, it's a separate unit. Um, and then we have our health team, that's all they do. We go out, we talk to the homeless, we try to get them in the shelters, we talk to all the uh, service providers, we try to get them on the board on okay, how can we get more people in the shelter. Um, it's broken down to veterans, you know, and if you're a vet, you know, we have these services for you. Um, if you're a couple, we kind of have these services that we can help for you. If you're a single male, single woman, we kind of have these services that we can help, help you with. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there. It's just trying to get the word out there and trying to get, trying to get everyone to come together. Um, so if I go here, I can get you in this program, this program, this program. Right now, it's like, get this program to speak up. You know what I'm saying? It's a work in progress. And we're really constantly, that's what these meetings are for. Trying to get through those speedboats. Trying to get it out. Is this going to be an ongoing process, these meetings? Yeah, it's been going on for uh, a couple of years. As far as I know. Basically, this is one of the largest one I've ever seen that bucket in the page. You know, like um, oh no, the cop with the cop? Yeah. Oh, I don't know about the cop with the cop. If that's going to keep going as far as like a monthly thing, um, it might be a quarterly thing, or it might be a two year thing. I don't know. I think this is the first time we're trying it um, at the same time throughout the valley. So I don't know how you, what do you think it, it's a good idea. Or? No, I mean, like, the transparency is at least come out. Yeah, yeah. You know, be able to question and ask questions and do face to face. Well, and that's always a good thing. No, you're, you're right. And that's, that's it. We need to get feedback. We need to see where you guys are coming from, from your perspectives, from whatever crossroads you cross in mind, as, as our perspective of what we're trying to do. Because um, there is, like that old saying, there's three sides to the story. That's true. Actually, or my truth, your truth is an actual one. So, uh, it's, we really are trying to, to resolve some of these homeless problems. But you look after the whole United States, they're all having the same problem. You know? Um, uh, that's true. Some, some places are more harsh than others. And the tendency seems, uh, the trends 
you know, um, it seems to me that to be more locked down. Uh, former Mayor Oscar Goodman was not a huge fan of the homeless, and actually, I think he equated them to uh, pigeons as a nuisance. We actually made it illegal to feed hungry people. Uh, made it what? We made it illegal to feed hungry people, literally. Yeah, that was one of them. So, well, and that's the another history thing. of Vegas yeah. with the homeless is an issue now with that kind of attitude. And of course, the police, um, you know, so, will we'll fall in line with the city government. So, in relation to that, if if there was a law like that passed right now, would you enforce it? Well, there's not a law like that, and we wouldn't we wouldn't enforce enforce that. We don't enforce that now. The only thing we enforce when people go out to feed the homeless. Well, is, I'm asking if there was, would you? Well, that wouldn't be up to me. I mean, if it, if that's what the statute. Well, it is up. Said, ultimately, it's up to you whether you well, enforce something. Well, if there's a statute like that, hypothetically, if that was a statute, my job is to enforce the law. Okay, so you would just enforce any law as long as. Well, I use my discretion just like I use my discretion mm -hmm. right now. So would you use your discretion and not arrest somebody for feeding a, a hungry person? Uh -huh. So would I, you I use your discretion? That question because it's, sure it's, you could. No, I can't because I can't say yes. And I can't say no. Sure you can. Because it depends on the situation. Okay, so if I was feeding a hungry person, would you arrest me? It depends on just the simply because it's against the law and for no other reason. Probably the first time, no. I just like I do like any, any part of my other job. I'm warning, hey, you know it's illegal to feed to the homeless. Mm -hmm. Okay, you came back there after I talked to you. It's like, all right, we already had this discussion. You know, per so, the statute, you're not allowed to do this. Okay, so, what would be the safety hazard of me, or the, uh, you know, the danger of me feeding somebody that's hungry? There's a lot of, there's a lot of safety issues. One, if you just do it, uh, you're not um, mandated by the FDA or OSHA to have. Um, good food, like you could have spoiled food. That so outside. opposed to that, somebody would take food out of a dumpster. Food, food. Well, that, that would be and that would be much better. That would be much better. That protects uh, businesses and people. I'm just, from I'm, that, I'm, that, just that, saying, I'm, I'm just saying there are some, there would be some safety issues with that because you know I might be a business owner and I might have some spoiled meat. I gotta get rid of it. You know what? I just go feed it down there because then I can write it off my tech. I don't know. Whatever you can come up with all kinds different reasons. Why do people do what they do? You know? I mean look at the world today. There's a lot of a lot of things going on. Um, ideally if it was a perfect world we probably wouldn't have to worry about the homeless, much less someone feeding the homeless. The only issues we have right now when it comes to feeding the homeless is the safety issues when they stop on the side of the road and they park and they get a big gathering and then it's on a busy street and people drive, someone gets hit. Okay, so it's a big would you suggest then that, um, because I, I uh, share food with the homeless, um, so would you suggest that we find a safer area? We do, we provide that. We have a giving project every second Saturday of the month. It's growing. Um, we, we started it. Um, last April, I believe, um, what we do, we provide a safe environment for people to come give. Because we're not against people giving. Well, I mean, I, I like doing it in my own neighborhood. Uh -huh. So would you suggest that we just find like an open area, like a park? Yeah. Do, um, okay. Yeah, like... As long as we're not blocking traffic. Yeah, because that's the main thing. It's all about, in, in the eyes of the police, it's all about safety. That's the number one thing, is, is people safe with safety. And when people go out to give, another issue we have is, is the homeless fighting over it. Um, getting in stabbings, uh, getting in fights. You know, I, I've been doing this for a while, and I, I haven't come across that at all. Well, quite, quite the opposite. Um, while we're feeding, I, I see guys actually, if we're running low, will split their food among the other people in their community. Well, then you're, you're pretty fortunate in the group at, that you're serving in because a lot of places we get, we get stabbings, we get knocked down, knock out of fights. Uh, people are still on their stuff after they, you know, all that stuff. So but we are criminals that. within any community, you know. Exactly. Um, we have I don't, to look I don't at think it. it's we any We have to look at it at a bigger level. picture. We can't say this is a good group, this is a bad group. We have to keep the safety there as a bigger picture. Because heaven forbid, you know, you go down to go um, go do a good deed and then it backfires on you and someone ends up stabbing you because you didn't give them an extra pair of pants or something. Stuff like that's happened. I am, and going back from... Well, no, back but I, I mean, I don't think that's an indication. I mean, 
you know, I can be walking down the, the street or going to a bar and a guy can chuck his stand. So I, I don't think the incident of crime among the homeless is Actually, any higher. Actually, how many workers we've had down in this area in the past two years? In which area? In the downtown area? Yeah. Amongst the homeless or just amongst? Um, just the homeless. No. What, what's the number of fair support? Now, how many murders have you had in the general population in that same area? Over the year, all shooting the stand. In that area, none, none, none related to the homeless. No, you had you had no violent crime in that area. No, we've had violent crime, but it's usually been the homeless against the homeless. Not just some uh, pedestrian walking down the street and the homeless will jump. It's like I said, it, re it revolves. Right. It so revolves. there's no domestic battery. I mean, the, the difference is, I mean, attempted murder and murder. I mean. And what right. murder is like, the guy succeeded. I'm just, I'm just telling you that, that it, it, there is violence. But there's like, violence across the board. Um, I've actually heard the numbers, and the numbers aren't higher than the general population. And if you look at the overall numbers, well, then I don't know where you're getting your numbers. We do, that, we do our statistics, we have our own statistics whenever a call comes out, and we're constantly going down in those areas because of the fights, because of stabbing, sexual assaults. Um, and then, then we sell the narcotics. A lot, of, a lot of them sell narcotics, they get high on spice, they get high on narcotics, and that's when those things come in. And then another issue, so we talked about the wet shelters as being a problem. Um, the mental health, we need better mental health facilities. You know, there's so many people in there. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then kind of going back to the giving project, um, we, we are providing a safe place for people to, to give. They can get, right now, they give clothes, they give food. Um, we even have some. We do it every second Saturday of the month from 10 to 12. No, it's just once a month. No, it's just once a month. Oh, once a month. Right now, it's once a month because we're trying to build. We're trying to get. We've got like 10 uh, providers that come out and they donate their time. It's all, it's all free. It's all donations. Um, so we have to have good people that are willing to get the time to do that. We come out there on our, our day off. We, we work, my squad works Tuesday through Friday, we come on a Saturday, so we can provide a safe environment. Um, we've got 60 people in housing since we started the program. Um, we've, on average, there's about 180 homeless that come to our event. They put bikes out for So we're out there doing our part trying to, trying to help. And this is just, Giving projects is just a kind of like a responsible way of giving with the security of having police there. So someone doesn't have to worry about a fight starting up in the line because or they ran out of stuff. How many times have you had this? You know, just too many people came and you just didn't have enough to give and then that one person didn't make any of things bad. No, for the people that I meet that they've never I might have said, the people that I deal with is the community of homeless. Um will take and share. With them, the, 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 uh, you know, but it only takes I, I, that one percent to hurt someone. Right, but that's any. I, you know, I work in the casinos, and I've seen guys get angry. But that, and that's that, but that, I mean, that's but like that said, is human nature. Um, you know, to indicate that the homeless are more inclined to behave that way, I don't think it's an accurate representation. Um, from my personal experience, um, from other people that have been in the group longer than I have, and have read much longer, also have similar stories. Um, part of the problem, like when you were saying that there's a perception of the homeless uh, being violent, drug addict, um, mentally ill, you know, this is the kind of thing that, that uh, keeps that kind of stereotype going. Um, you know, so you have to be very careful when you make, um, you know, like the statements or... Number one, two, it's a double-edged sword because I can, we can go back and forth all day. Sure. And trust me, I'm on your side. I'm, I definitely, I definitely want to, I see a lot of positive things, but the small, regardless if it's a big negative or a small negative, we can't have the negative, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm totally, I'm totally there on, on your side as far as like, you know, we have to change perception, you know, sure. there's a lot of good people. And in our events, um, out of the, I don't know, I think we've had like 10, 11 of the giving projects, we've only had like three incidents where, you know, someone got in a fight and said, and that's with us there. Right. And that we had to take someone to jail or we had a legal 2000 them because it was mentally there, they didn't know who they were, they didn't know what was going on, so we had a legal them. 
you know, but still that small percentage. Now that's with the local police there. Now you don't have that police presence, and then heaven forbid someone get, you know, murdered or anything like like a, someone giving. Now the murders that happen are the homeless and the homeless, but it's just like any family. You live with someone long enough, or you're in a tight, small area long enough, you're going to have differences, and one day someone's going to break down and go overboard. Um, so we're definitely, I, I definitely see where you come from, and that's just the thing. You gotta get the word out there. You gotta, um, you know, make sure they're aware of all the the services that are, are provided. Make sure the public is aware of how we, how they can better off uh, help the homeless. Because when people go down to feed the homeless in those areas that don't want to go in the shelters, they're really just keeping them homeless. Because they don't have to go do anything, they everything brought to them, so they're not wanting to help themselves because they don't have to. No, I, I can't imagine anybody can help you. Well, you, need to come, you need to come. You need to come ride with me for a week and see. Well, no, just because somebody gives me a sandwich. I mean, it, it, you know. Uh, yeah, but you might just give them a sandwich, but two hours later, someone else gives them a sandwich. Two hours after that, someone gives them a luggage. So Four hours after that, someone gives them a, a sleeping bag. Two hours after that, they give them a tent. So, you're saying that because these people give them the, the minimum basics for human survival, that that encourages them to stay. Um, so, that, that's because I can and gave you a sandwich every day and do a good job in the bottom of the channel because that would be your outcome. No. Let, me, let me do it for a week and see if I do a sandwich two times a day and sleep in bed with you. Well, you give up well the right, of anything well, you have. right now, that's, I have stuff. But if you don't have stuff, let's say you don't have anything, you're homeless. And I came and gave you a sandwich every day. Actually, I gave you three meals a day because some of these people get five meals a day. Um, they get four or five meals a day, and a lot of the shelters have free, uh, free uh, service halls for, for feeding, like uh, Catholic Charities at 10 o'clock, you get a free meal. So if I have nothing, and someone keeps coming up every day, give me food, give me clothes, give me a tent, give me uh, all this, all the there's no motivation. The basic survival. I'm telling you, there's no motivation to get off the streets, and they'll tell you that. It's like, why would I, why would I go anywhere? I, have, I don't have to worry about anything. I know, I know solicit and give me a beer, because there are a lot of them are talking about being an alcoholic. They can keep, they can keep uh, their habit. You know, they're, they're so... So come come, on, with, come with me for a week and I'll show you. I, 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 I do it twice a week. I do it twice a week. I do it every day, 40 hours a week. I'm telling you, a lot of these people are like, why would I want to go work? I get everything. I, I just, it's counterintuitive. Um, just come with me for a week. And, well, and then there's the other issue. I mean, there's the moral issue. Um, you realize that um, for a lot of people, there's the, the religious aspect. Uh, yeah, which that's is, a lot. That's, that deters some of them going to the shelters. Well, no, no, I mean for the people giving. Um, for, um, you know, there's a couple of things where it's, you know, I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you me. And it was um, but people who are religious that they should go out and help the homeless and feed the homeless uh, with no expectation. Um, as keeping them in shelter, you know, keeping them homeless because you can help them. Uh, I don't see it. There's always other, other line, underlying issues. Well, it goes back to, remember I talked about um, we can't help those that don't want help. Right. Okay, a lot, but the, I mean, you, you can't guarantee anything, but the majority of the people that I deal with in the homeless quarter, they're the ones that when we give them food, give them stuff, they're not going to get out of their situation because they're content and they don't have to worry about their responsibility. And they told me, I want to be homeless. I've had some, we've been homeless 20 years. He's like, I wouldn't change it. I've had numerous people tell me I wouldn't change being homeless. He's like, why? I don't have to work. I don't have no responsibility. You know, I get, uh, some of them, some of them, you kind of get disability money that you get in. I get enough money. If, if I do want to go into an apartment, I get to get an apartment. And then I come out here. But that majority so, is increasing. So if they're not doing anything outside of intentionally being homeless, what difference does that make? Yeah. Say what? If they're not doing anything outside of intentionally being homeless, what difference does that make? What do they it doesn't do anything. It, 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 like I said, it's not illegal to be homeless. Right. But whenever you're breaking the law and you're destroying other people's property. But we're not talking about that. We're just talking about yeah. people that choose to be homeless. 
Yeah, they can be homeless. But you got to be homeless, you still have to have responsibility within society. You still have to obey the laws. You still have to have respect for other people's property. You can't go in a, a, a crap in, in a corner on someone's other on someone's property and have the species and all that build up. That's a hazard issue. Not only that, like but a city, a city issue to provide um, other cities. I mean, you're, you're aware. So if I come, if I come, in, if I come on your property and I use a restroom, that's the city's problem. Well, if well, part of it is that uh, Circle Park they intent, they locked the bathrooms so that homeless people wouldn't be able to use them. That was when the park was closed. Right? No, no, it's right now. No, it's not. And of course, uh, you know. And then and then they they uh, prosecute people for going to the bathroom in public. Once they've eliminated the public bathrooms. Well, there's other bathrooms besides those park bathrooms. I don't. I didn't know that they were locked up, but yeah, there actually isn't. And there's a, a Burger King close by that you can pay to use the bathroom. There's no public bathrooms anywhere near there. Yeah, it's kind of an odd situation. And most cities. Well, I mean, I can't answer though. I can't answer that. So that's above my pay grade. But that's something where you guys have to live in the city and ask them why they do that. Oh no, no, we're not expecting you to answer. But I mean, we want to make you aware. So when you're going out and you see these behaviors, well, that, you know, you got to understand, of course, nobody wants uh, somebody to come and shit on their land. However, as a society, I mean, we don't provide, uh, you know, public bathrooms or use, uh, restricted use, like, you know what, if you don't give me a dollar for a cup of coffee, I might use my bathroom. Uh, as a unit, as a unit, what would you tell somebody who doesn't have the resources and yet still has to use the bathroom? What do you expect them to do? Go to the shelter. I'll go to the shelter, and that's where some of them are. Listen, they don't have a vehicle because they're poor. I'm in an area that doesn't have a shelter. I'm supposed to hold my bowels until I can walk in that shelter. No, but you're not supposed to, you know, use it right in front of the school either. <laughs> you know, well, you know, where kids are. Or, it, 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 many cities provide uh, shower facilities and, and public I mean, a lot of that is five issues. You don't have to write now. And unfortunately, I think a lot of the reasons why they probably don't is because the, the view that destroyed the bathrooms and clog them up and do all that stuff, is that happens. got about 15 minutes like, the Catholic Charities, I was there the other day. Hold on. I'm down the restroom. I just want to make sure we don't run out of time. Someone needs a t-shirt in the toilet and put crap on all over the walls. You know, that's, that's not, I, but that happens more, more than you think. Been, have you ever been a cop? Have you always been a cop? Like growing up, have you ever been to casinos? Uh, no, I've never been to Vegas, so I came here. Oh. I, I go to the casinos. <laughs> the same people that did the bathroom in the casinos. The tourists and the people I figured do the same thing. I drove a truck for five wall. years, and I can tell you, I drove a truck for five years. I can tell you, public bathrooms are hideous. Yeah, they are. Yeah, it's not homeless people. Yeah, it's, it's everybody. Just have uh -huh. yeah. And and the solution shouldn't be to lock the bathrooms so that they do that, you well, know, that, on the sidewalk well, next not to my it. My choice to do that. Mm -hmm. no. It's it's the uh, it's the people's choice or the the city's decision to do that. It's not my choice. The parks are the city owned. Metro doesn't. Right. Metro doesn't. Um, uh, that's not their jurisdiction. That's not our jurisdiction. That's the city marshals. So all those issues like that, you know. Oh no, yeah, that's true too. Um, but like, I wouldn't know where they locked them. The only reason I'm just saying, the only reason I can think that is maybe they're destroying the bathroom. Maybe they're maybe they got to fix them. I don't know. Um, uh, specifically about mental health, or is the uh, crisis intervention team? Yeah, we got that. Uh, yeah. Oh, you already talked about that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. So, did you have any other questions? I mean, because we've been on the, the homeless and the crisis, but there were some other issues. I mean, well, yeah, we got other issues. Are you able to, to talk on other um, besides the homeless? And the, the yeah, I don't have a problem talking. Okay. Um, I encourage you guys to come to some of the meetings, though. I, I got like 12 minutes left. So yeah, I got it. Online. So when it comes to, um, you know, there were a lot of officers, like thousands recently, that weren't enforcing a lot of uh, uh, nonviolent or victimless crimes in you know, New York, NYPD. Uh, do you, I don't know, what would you say, in your opinion, was that, uh, like, was that wrong? Was there a mistake? I mean, there wasn't, there was 
was no increase in crime uh, during that period when they weren't enforcing, they say like 88 to 94 percent of crimes and not writing many traffic tickets. I had like, no idea. You, Where was you don't know about New York? NYPD. So I, I'm not oh, familiar yeah. with it. Oh, New that's York. the protest against the mayor. All the officers in New York are in the back. The mayor. The mayor of the city. Oh, you don't know about it. The two officers that were shot. No, and that the uh, police union actually called for a police stop and slow down. Oh, really? Uh, and not to do their job. They not to do their job. Uh, and the, you know, they thought they were scared. This is the first time they were scared. Um, and the actual consequence is that the family slowed down the um, And if there was a police uprising, there was actually a And the city and the police weren't actively pursuing these minor uh, non-violent uh, you know, right into the future that you walk in, and when there's like kind of really no victim. I mean, but that's, that's what it works. I mean, if you look at the metro as a whole, I think we do a pretty good job of, of things that we do. And the only reason we enforce a lot of the uh, jaywalking and stuff like that, because our fatality rate for uh, pedestrians and vehicles was skyrocketing, skyrocketing in the last year. Um, and then, I, get um, I don't know the numbers, I could ask the traffic officer. But it was way too many. And, you know, that's something that the, the sheriff pushed at that time is to, you know, to, to kind of enforce those laws and whatever. Um, that's one reason why we got away with handling a lot of the accidents, the minor accidents, so we can enforce some of the traffic, the traffic safety, uh, like the crosswalks, making sure that the pedestrians are safe for going through there, you know, slowing the vehicles down. That's, that's where a lot of the fatalities happen. Is because people don't want to get across while they're supposed to be safe. Hey, um, that was uh, Chef Flex, right? We're about now. Well, I've got a question in relation to that about the saturation teams, which they've actually stated that they're what they do is they basically depend, descend upon a neighborhood, you know, seek out anybody they can find for any minor excuse to stop and search them and to ID them. And um, basically just harass everybody in the neighborhood because they've determined that this neighborhood is a high-risk neighborhood. So do you, and they've also specifically stated we would not do that in Summerlin. That was a quote in the newspaper by a Metro spokesperson. So do you think it's right to harass everybody within a neighborhood because a certain small percentage of people in that neighborhood might commit crimes? Well, I don't, I wouldn't use harass, first of all, but we do take crime statistics if there is a spike in, in violent crimes, that's usually what, it, what we base it on. Violent crimes meaning uh, street robberies, uh, sexual assaults, um, like uh, assault battery with weapons or just, you know, license. That when we get a spike like that, we do, that's where the saturation teams, they go in and they try to, uh, Make sure that um, if that is going on, they're going to stop talking to people and find out who's causing problems. Because a lot of times when that happens, when the spike, um, it's, a lot of times it falls back to like narcotics uh, or gang involvement, stuff like that that increases um, the violence in that area. So when police go in there, that's what they're, they're focusing on, is trying to focus on the criminal element, whether it be a, uh, a gang. Um, we got intel that a gang moved in the area and they're trying to take over the turf, or may it be uh, narcotics, uh, you know, intel that hey, there's uh, drugs and drug dealers in the area and, that, and they're protecting their, their turf. That is what we try to do. It's not like hey, we're going to go in there and you know stop everyone or jaywalking. And, you know, well, they, they've actually said that that's the policy. Huh? They've actually said that's the policy. No policy. There is a policy. There's a stated policy. There's no policy saying that we're going to stop everyone. No, that, that was a metro spokesman. They actually said that. Well, that that's know, what they do. I don't know what metro person that was, but there's no policy saying. Hey, uh, you guys from here to here, you're going to stop everything for everything. 
that's not how we that's not how we operate. We operate. We try to find a criminal element. Now, does jaywalking give me a probable cause to stop someone to talk to them to see if they belong in the neighborhood, to see if they are part of the problem? Yes. It's a, it's a how do you determine that? Yeah, right. Who, how do you determine who belongs in the neighborhood? Yeah. That's kind By of talking to them. Okay. So what determines that they don't belong in the neighborhood? Right. And they tell you, hey, I don't live here. Yeah, but why would so you you're not allowed in neighborhoods you don't live in? Okay, you guys are jumping to conclusions. Oh, no, 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 that's, 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 up real quick. that's a natural up. extension of what you're saying. You're saying no, somebody to told you they don't live in a neighborhood, so they don't belong there. Listen to me real quick. If someone jaywalks, I'm in the area because they're increasing crime. Okay? Hey, we declared that this there's been an increase in crime here. All right, so um, we're going to patrol this area more. I'm driving around. I see someone uh, committing crime. I'm going to stop talking. Am I going to write a ticket, take him to jail right away? No. My goal is to find out what the problem is. What, what's the issue? Is this person part of the problem? So I stop him. I have a right to stop him because he broke the law. Okay, now, there, that's when I, I can interrogate him. Hey, what are you doing here? Right. Oh, I'm driving through. That's how we do things. Right, so you don't have a stop and frisk policy? No, no, no. No. That, that's like old school. Like, you know, way back in the day when they first started policing, policing has changed a lot. It really has. You know what I'm saying? We really are out there. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of laws. There's a lot of rights that people have. We can't just go and stop anyone. Okay? People have the right to walk down the, the sidewalk, regardless of who they are. Okay? It's my job to figure out if they're about to commit a crime, or committed a crime. You know, in that area. So if I can stop someone by breaking a small crime to stop and talk to them and, and, and question them and make them feel uncomfortable. As far as like, okay, so you don't live here. Well, then what are you doing? Well, um, I'm visiting a friend. What's your friend's name? Uh, you know, stuff like that. We're not, we don't, we're not trying to get him up to get, you know, just Joe Citizen walking through a neighborhood. Does that make sense? Or, oh, oh, I hear what you're saying. Um, I mean, I mean, because I know you seem right. more of the, um, uh, like well, I, I seem like a person that has lived in minority neighborhoods and seen yeah. minority stop for no yeah. reason whatsoever. So, but that's yeah. not true. That you is don't true. Just stop, you yeah. don't just stop everyone. Maybe back in the day when you were growing up. Maybe a year ago. Is it, uh, oh, no, it's a policy. <laughs> well, you, what's your de definition of minority then? I, I mean, there's a lot of definitions of minorities. What's your definition? People of color is, is a huge definition of it. Well, what's yours though? I just said it. You know, people of color are a minority. There's different. There's different uh, ethnicities within that that group. But I've lived in Latino neighborhoods. I've lived in black neighborhoods. I've lived in poor white neighborhoods. So you're saying we live in those neighborhoods? You never got stopped? Well, I am saying that I have been stopped in poor white neighborhoods. Yes. Okay, no, I'm talking about the, na the Hispanic neighborhoods. When you were going through there, you never got. Generally, stopped. no. What were you doing? Those, like I lived there. Okay. So. And a lot of the people so, that I saw. I mean, so if there's majority Hispanic, so if you stop someone, the odds are they're going to be Hispanic, right? No. So how can you say? Well, that's not, I'm not. I'm basing it on you stopped a Hispanic person. I'm basing it on I've seen cops drive up when a person is just simply walking down the street, stop and question somebody. Question them or just talk to them? Because I'll, I'll stop and talk to anyone. They well, the if they know their rights, then they know that they can t they can ask whether they're being detained. But a lot of people don't actually oh, know their good, rights. Good. You know what? This is a good time. All right. Now you're familiar. Now are you familiar with these flyers that are given out? Uh, you get this. Oh, I hand them out. Oh, you do. I've never I, seen it. Is there anything on there that you would find objectionable? I'm What do you mean? Any of the policies that we find when we're dealing with uh, forming citizens of their rights, when, when dealing with the police. Uh, I mean, this is actually brought up on, uh, I tell you. Oh, uh, do you need to go? Um, yeah, if you want to use that, it might be easier. Yeah, you can use that about three minutes. Now, when did they, they was it So, show? yeah, I mean, is there anything on there that you would disagree with or, or have an issue with? 
I don't have an opinion. I can't give my opinion. Well, these are these are policies for citizens dealing with the cops. I mean, you know, would you say that any of these are, you know, are detrimental to? Well, everyone has their rights. Right. So, I mean, everyone has their their, their rights. It's their it's their their duty to you know. Well, so you're you're familiar with laws, right? Obviously. So, I mean, do you see anything inconsistent with the laws on there? No, you're right. I mean, do you see any errors in what's written there? I just added maybe give me a second to read it and then. Yeah, and it's then, small print. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We're, we're not working with the, quite the budget that Metro has. <laughs> so, what organization are you guys with? Nevada Cop Block. Yeah, okay. Are you familiar with us? I, I've heard of you. Now, have you heard of us um, in a positive way or a negative way? Um, I would say kind of neutral. Some, I mean, some of the things that you guys bring out, I think you're just trying to um, uh, promote people's rights or make them understand their, their rights. And we have no problem with that. Everyone has, everyone needs to know their rights. Um, so, it make the job a lot easier, I would imagine. Um, we're, we're dealing with we're dealing with a small percentage of people that, first of all, they don't care about society because they don't care about the other person. Uh, that's why you know they commit you know, horrendous crimes against other people um, for one reason or another. But I, I mean, that's I mean, but, this comes way after. I mean, um, um, when everybody's I mean, you're pursued, innocent, holding guilty. So even when you make an arrest, you know, it, it still has to go before somebody can make a determination. Um, so, I mean, that, that will be determined by juries and, and judges, but in the initial stop, and, and see if there's something yeah. to do about it? Yeah, I mean, why not? Um, we need to, uh, be, we're always trying to improve. Um, everyone can improve. Um, you know, I'm all about... Here, 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 so you, here's you do understand... Here, 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 let, me, let me just... One thing and then you can answer. You do understand how a lack of accountability actually harms the police themselves and makes it harder for them to do their job by creating hostility and distrust and things that they're working with. Yeah. So it's even to your guys' benefit to have accountability and not to protect those bad actors. Well, I wouldn't go as, I don't know what to say, protect per se, but you can easily say everything throughout the whole United States, if you take an issue with Ferguson, that makes us look bad out bad here too. So every incident, like we're held accountable, every bad or negative thing that occurs is going to reflect bad against the police. And yes, we need to try to fix those issues, you know, and try to get the confidence, you know, I would love to have the confidence from you guys to think, you know, that we're there in the best interest of the people. And I feel like the conversation we have, I, I, I hope that you have a hundred better understanding where we come from, like as far as a homeless issue, trying to make that. But it is a complex issue. It's not something you can do overnight. And there's going to be a lot of trial and error before we get it right. But I think, um, you know, by having these committees, by having the people come and talk to us to tell us, hey, hey, we see it this way, you see it from a different way, how can we meet in the middle, you know what I mean? I think that's what it comes down to is, you know, for the longest time, you know, back, it, it wasn't a thing like, hey, you go to the cops to talk about the issues, it's like, the cops kind of did their thing, you know, it wasn't more a, hey, how can we help the community? We really are partners with the commu community, I mean, it says it's on our vehicles, that's how I feel we really are. Like. You know, I sit down here, I listen to you guys' concerns, I try to answer as best as I can for you guys as far as not getting too uh, personal for my opinions, you know, uh, on the partner side, try to tell you guys where we're coming from. Um, I mean, part of the thing is why we came is because the officers are here, and we do want some of your personal input because uh, there is people behind that bed, you're a person behind that bed. Um, 
So well, now I'm going to ask you this question. Um, now that they're talking about having cameras, the cops uh, should be wearing cameras to record all uh, interactions as well as we have the right to record you know, our citizens. Uh, you know, how do you feel about that? I mean, aside from... I, I, think, I think it's going to be a positive thing for both parties, for the police department and for the public. Um, one, I think it'll make uh, better officers out of us because uh, then you, you're, you're more uh, held accountable of your actions. Um, I think it really make officers um, you know, think about instead of just, just, like you said, we're human. A lot of times when we react is emotions, you know what I'm saying? And then it's like, oh, why did I do that? But I think this would be a way to kind of help, help with that because there is accountability, okay, hey, you know, do you, do you think that the, um, I, I mean, we all hear about that, that thin blue line. So do you think the cameras will help officers who may be hesitant to report an incident uh, against a fellow officer? Do you think this will make this easier since it's already recorded? And now the, uh, you know, the person doesn't have to come I, out and put themselves in jeopardy? I think it's all positive. I think having the cameras be positive for the public because they can actually see what happened. It's positive for the officers because, you know, they can, it's not like, well, that's not what happened. Like, well, here, this is what happened. And yes, it makes it easier for the fellow officers. You know, we don't necessarily have to go on, on their word because we have evidence. I think as a whole, and I think that's why the department is pushing it, um, is that it's going to be a positive for everyone. Is it, is it volu it's voluntary now? Whether you, yeah, 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 well, for the new, new hires, new hires are mandated. Required, it's voluntary. Yeah. Yeah. I don't wear one because a lot of times I'm behind a computer desk doing emails, doing meetings and stuff like that, or just kind of interacting like a community event like this. I, I don't have one and we're out of them. I asked for one, but they didn't have any. So, because I'm not opposed to them. So, do you, so the, 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 um, the city provides the cameras? No, they don't the department. Come out, or the department? department. It, yeah. And they don't come out and you don't have to find them. Sorry. Uh, hey, good to see you. Good to see you. I got to get back over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Depends on where it's taking the train. I'm sorry? Are you from New York? Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. Oh, she said Bay. I'm very familiar with it. Oh, okay. I'm from Bay Ridge. So. But it's a small enough city that everybody is kind of like. He's the, he's the king of Brooklyn. Yeah. I don't know my dad would have been A lot of kings of Brooklyn. <laughs> New York, too? I'm from Vegas. Oh, you're born and raised. Oh. See, I'm not from Vegas. I'm from Oklahoma, so, you know, I'm a little... How long have you been here? Eight years. Oh. So, I, I'm getting used to it. Yeah, best friends from Oklahoma. Uh, yeah. It's different. I tell you, when I came out here, it's, it's different. Way different than back home. Were you a police officer in Oklahoma? No. Okay. He was yeah. in Cowboy. Yeah. Cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for those who, um, so do you feel uh, when for those who wear the cameras, or especially those on the streets, that they should be on at all times, or do you think the option yeah, to shut them a, off is? We have a camera policy. They're on. They're always on. Oh. Um, and then, uh, well, and we have certain when we encounter people, there are certain policies they will let you know that cameras are recording and stuff like that. So, um, I mean. I think it's really gonna a lot of the issues that you know you kind of brought up. I think it will resolve a lot of those issues and, and make it more accountable for those bad apples. So even beyond that, we do have an issue with the citizen filming since citizens don't actually have access to what do you mean? Like, like this? Like this? Yeah. yeah. I don't have a problem with people filming. The only time there's an issue with people filming is when we're trying to do our job and people get too close because we don't know if that's a threat or if they're actually just trying to film. That's where the issue comes when people are filming. Um, I don't have a problem being filmed or anything like that. Um, but I just don't want people... But like when I'm trying to take someone into custody or I'm, I'm trying to deal with an issue and then I have someone, you know, that becomes an issue because I don't know what their intentions are. Especially nowadays, I don't know any... any well, well, I mean, they watch both ways. I mean, so, because of recent incidents uh, between civilians and police officers, you understand why 
I said, oh, you might want to record um, the, the arrest or the uh, incident while it's happening. Um, you know, and if there's a crowd of people standing there and one person has a camera, their intention isn't any different than the rest of the crowd standing there. Hey. But they are. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, mainly in between us. But at the same time, we push it's everyone the back in a crowd situation. It's not just a person with a camera. Now, some officers are not opposed that they don't like to be filmed because they don't want their face out there. But uh, I, I look at it as a safety, safety issue. That's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're trying to do your job and you got someone over your shoulder and you put a camera in your face and, and you can't do your job. Right, as long as you're not interfering yeah. within you know, a couple of feet by filming the incident and filming the police. Like behind. I mean, we're and that, it's, it's our time. I mean, you can't go down the street without being on camera. Yeah. Right, which is one of the Yeah, it's an issue own. of, of uh, <laughs> access. Yeah. Um, and I believe the, the cameras on these uh, stoplights, the cameras, you know, you guys, well, you guys don't have them, but, you know, even the camera, once you guys have the cameras on your uniforms, we won't have access to them. After, I believe, after investigation, I believe... Like uh, DeAndre Burghardt was murdered out by Red Rock um, just about a year ago now, about a year ago today, it was uh, early February. The uh, Highway Patrol does have dash cams. That's a different that agency. I can't, out. I can't speak for it. Right, I'm, I'm saying um, it's a matter of access. It's a matter of... Uh, well, I think, well, I think it's all new. Over time, I think it, I think that will change. I mean, if you look at some of the other... A lot of the videos, like the police one videos, you know, it has video cameras and stuff. They eventually come out. I think it's just a matter of changing policies. They tend to come interest. out within days if they support the police story. And then they'll yeah. come out years um, later I, I if mean, they don't. I, yeah, I, you're and that's, that's the reason that it's important that citizens have the right to do Well, I, I think it's coming. I think it's coming. So do, you, oh. <laughs> so do, so do you feel that it's um, uh, cop watch mainly? Yeah, yeah, this is kind of the stuff we do. We can have that. We have we, so, we have so, that for citizens. So do you feel this? Um, do you feel that these bad apples all around are um, have are making your job harder, or do you think it's the or people that are? Reporting it, covering it, like the protests and everything, the, the attention being brought to it. Regardless. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. you, so you don't if, think it's if you, if harder. If you, if, <laughs> if, if you took out, like I said, it was a perfect world, we didn't have any issues, you know, maybe officer, I mean, if no officer made a mistake, our job would still be tough. Okay. So, so, yeah. so we should probably not make it tougher. And, when, and since we don't live in this perfect world, when somebody clearly shows, you know, that they've done something questionable, we probably should address that. I mean, so all, I, I, all I can say is this. We do have policies. We do have investigators to follow up with those issues. But there's also how they handle that There's an actual history of accountability with Metro. There's a, there's a history of no accountability whatsoever. There's an actual history that every single shooting ever in the history of Las Vegas, not just the Metro, not the Metro, not the Metro Police Department, but the Las Vegas area, every um, police department within the Las Vegas area, not one single time. Not one single time. It doesn't matter if that person they shot is unarmed, it doesn't matter if that person is completely innocent and unarmed, it doesn't matter the circumstances behind that, it's never in history. Well, and I had to just fall back to the, the training that we get, that the officers are well, doing everything that's interesting they can to do the right because thing. because when the uh, driver that was having a diabetic uh, episode was beaten by Henderson Police, the DA said that he was not allowed to prosecute those Henderson Police because they were trained to kick people in the head. So there might be some issues with that training, and there might be people like yourself who... You know, you say you're the you know, you're the cop and you know, you see an issue. Maybe that's something that you should work towards getting a change. And just now, like now the, that if you were aware of it, now, now that you've been made aware of it, now the, I, the like guy that was a beaten to think about. The, well, the, well, we can talk about your agency because there was a man that was beaten. Um, I believe it was last summer downtown um, because he did not walk fast enough in a crowded bar. Um, that was kind of a big. Uh, that was glossed over until um, until a suit was brought and then a lot of attention was brought to the media. It was uh, reinvestigated. Uh, the 
Nachos, uh, uh, Imperial Affairs came back and said uh, that this is all within the Metro policy. Okay. But, uh, so they could not do anything about it. So, um, those sort of things where they're just saying, well, beating the guys within our policy. Those are maybe training and policy that should be changed. Right. And, I, and, I, and I believe there are and training, some of the, the, that training issue, and training with, with that, that officer. So, so um, I guess it's use of force issues then, right? Maybe that, that, maybe that officer who was so intent on beating that person that he fell down should not be a cop. Maybe he should be punished in some way instead of saying this is within our policy. Maybe, uh, first of all, maybe that shouldn't be within your policies. But secondly, maybe you should eliminate people that do that sort of thing. So that there's some sort of perception that you guys do have some sort of interest. In that. Just one opinion. But I mean, I mean, like you I said, I well, <laughs> Working. I'm working at both. I'm working from a place from Starbucks, but that's all I need. Um, are you going to have, do you have a busy day or are you going to go to some properties with me today? Hey, can, we, can we cover all the questions from the other people that asked us to come? Um, I, don't, I, I don't know actually. Right, because it would be fair. I mean, I guess they asked us, sure. um, except, you know. If we have questions, throw them out. Uh, um, I thought I covered pretty much the ones that I had and the ones I could think of. I already did a couple that Tasha had asked. Okay. So. She has to ask about Officer Gibson. I don't think you would know about what? Gibson. Uh, <laughs> to ask about Officer Gibson, that's what Tasha asked. But, <laughs> um, the one but I don't think you would know anything about <laughs> well, what do we need to ask? I don't know. <laughs> Well, I mean, we could bring that up. It's actually interesting, and it, it's not sure what, it goes into accountability. Yeah. I'm not sure what kind of questions to ask. Um, okay, just asking what, how they feel about him. Okay. Or populated prisons. Oh, yeah, I don't. Camera. <laughs> <laughs> while they're recording okay, us. It's a private, it's oh, no, no. private establishment. Oh, no. Yeah, what you guys did on. We're talking about um, the police oh, more city in the neighborhood. Yeah. It was saying, hey, every police officer has a right to make sure that they're fellow officers are in the gang rule, that they're not um, they have an uh, doing anything that um, untoward me or would be if you and I mean, you that, I mean in every uh, industry that yeah, more they they always had a, a group that made sure we so had the 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 and the ones that couldn't afford those standards were drummed out of that. People scrutinize cops and they shoot every time because the cops never well, um, you know, it's depending on the industry. Um, you know, we had facts that you can kill that we have to turn the standards. Um, it's not an actual investigation. And that's what you would do. But you're proud of your profession, and you don't want anyone that would do anything that would that would uh, like this, so you, you know what I mean? You don't like him. So, yeah. Well, 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 you wouldn't have to exist if we could Why? I, I know, but, but by throwing it out to one department, it should be every oh, officer's every individual that, that should be. Like well, don't like Bob, this is the block. Well, yeah, but you, you don't see the, the joke in the top block. It's very similar. very funny term. Oh, okay. Uh, right. so, yeah. Okay, now, okay. I can just read so, that. So, the next time you have to what type of shirt you can have. Mm -hmm. No, I, no, well, now you bring that up. I see where you're going with the joke now. Now, I mean, you know, it's a play on words. But it, but it, it is, but it kind of comes, you just, like my first impression was, okay, you guys don't like that. No, well, it's true. So she mentioned the shirt, I honestly didn't know that he was wearing a shirt until uh, she mentioned the shirt. Um, but until your so, organization. So what have you said that was really hard for her to talk The only thing is, um, not really. Um, we're we're passionate about what we do. Kind of what we are. We don't have to talk. We, I mean, I mean, outside of my shirt, well, it kind of seems we like haven't really said anything outside of asking for a cop. Asking for why there is isn't a cop. We haven't said cops around. Because I, 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 I feel like we do have a 
No, his time is running. Um, I think, uh, I think it should be a health council. And, and, and I said that earlier. As I said, oh, no, I, as I said, I, I, I got a lot of what to read. Like if, if you want to say I don't like cops, that's the reason why I would not like cops. No, that's, that's why I was asking. I was asking that, is that, like, <laughs> if my if offers are friendly, he's walking the neighborhood. Yeah. And just doing his job and not covering up the top. In, in the uh, case of Metro, aggressively making sure that there is no kind of um, yeah, I, I think you know, guys have a, a bad track record, right? I mean, it's in the news, I mean, it's documented. Right. Well, so, we're going to pick on us. You probably have room to get rid of some of them. You know, bad options. I'm not saying we, we don't. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't I think it's a part of the sister hanging way to keep these guys all the time. No, I don't think so. There's a lot of officers that get fired all the time that you don't know. There was, there was, you support for it, and it's something you fired. So let's just step in and make sure that he did not get fired. Um, Jesus Caraballo, who, is, who is said to his wife three months before he murdered Sam Gibson, that he wanted to shoot somebody so he could get paid time off. And then well, I, don't know about, I don't know about all that, but uh, here's they, all I can they do. waited until he put it in the middle of the day. You know, I, I try to do my best to be fair to everyone. I try to do my best to enforce the laws. I really don't think I'm above the law. Uh, and that's why I did this job. I did this job to help make it more different. Because I didn't go to the world. You know, I would have went to the center. There's another way to get back to my country. This is my way of getting back to the country. You know, and I'm trying to do my best. So, is there an issue here? Um, can things be better? Yes. Um, are we working on it? I believe we are. So, I mean, you can sit here and pick out all the little, the little things, the fire history and all that. It's not the same thing. And they are kind of being nervous. I mean, for a community, I knew that. 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 It's in the homeless community and um, the other community. I know people are with the 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 hunter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that, 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 that murder? Yeah, absolutely. We're very okay. familiar with that. Okay. So, um, you know, that was an unfortunate circumstance. Someone was trying to help someone else out, and they knew him. You know. But because they're homeless, that's, that's not the thing, and that's, 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 that's why it happened. Right. Right, it wasn't, it, it was, um, you know, an aversion under the interest of violence. The coffee's for anybody, right? I asked the guy up there, he said they're only for the office. The right. Free coffee, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's okay. Uh, well, I had one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a refill, they're 54 cents. 54 cents. For refill. I don't know. Well, we're going to have I don't need it. I was just going to get one of these. But it's not actually... Officers aren't actually supposed to take free things on your own duty. I know, we don't have to. Did you have to count until you come to Valentine? I mean, if they get their stuff up the table, they can probably push it. I'm down with I don't think before. Oh, you think you're done? You got more questions? You can go out there. I don't know. There's a thing in there. So do you guys have a website so we can write into, you know, please support these events. If you'd like to see more of them. Yeah, uh, but the monthly that would be even better. Yeah, you know, where the cops come out. Um, yeah, the Facebook. The Department of Facebook. Can we request a certain officer? Uh, uh, about a year and a half ago, when I was arrested for peacefully uh, illegally protesting against Sam Gibson being murdered, the officer that arrested, the sergeant that arrested me, uh, I had asked him some questions, and he told me uh, he couldn't speak, and that we were having coffee with people, and that he could talk to me. Can I request that officer? I don't see why not. 
I'd like, yeah, I'd like to take him out on that. So, is this the first one of these you've done? Yeah. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Here. I wasn't expecting this. Hey, I was like, I had a feeling. Um, I, honestly, I didn't know what to expect, really. Um, people are so busy. They just, a lot of them just come get their coffee and they leave, they say hi or whatever. Um, but I, I think it is a good, a good report. I get a better understanding of it. Um, I've heard the, the cop walk before, um, and I didn't understand exactly what, what your intentions were. I do want to let you know, and, and the thing is, remember, because we, we actually we police our own group also. We make sure we hold our people accountable, which is amazing. Uh, Justin McCaskill. McCass was arrested, I believe, last week for uh, making threats against cops in the FBI. Well, he was a guy that was a member of Cop Block uh, originally. Um, Southern Oklahoma Cop Block was um, He started making threats on Facebook, and we publicly disassociated from him. He warned people that he was not a member of Cop Block. Uh, he moved to Colorado and created another Cop Block called Colorado Cop Block. We publicly disassociated from them with there. So are you guys um, a member? No. Founders? Founders? <clears throat> I'm a member. I'm a member. member. Um, and, and each state, I, don't believe, I don't believe in titles. I believe it, uh, and, and each state will have its own. I believe encouraging everyone to participate. Well, I agree. Yeah. I understand that. But, like, who, who uh, created it? I started the group. You started it. Uh, yeah. local group. Right. right. But you have to know every national group. Oh, in there. Yeah. Um, so he was arrested because he was making uh, threats, specific threats against cops in the FBI. Um, so I, I'm not, I won't be surprised if they try to use that. But the reality is we have a history of both of us in our testimony and warning people that we can not represent against it. And so that's the sort of accountability that cops should have when people within their group um, do things that doesn't represent their, uh, their mission and their goal. Right. That's not happening. They play the the rain and they, they make that thin blue line and they protect their group that are doing their thing instead of uh, cleaning that up, getting rid of their data. Well, so, I, 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 think, I think you'll see some change. Um, I mean, you know, if you, if you go back, you know, back to the 1970s, that's when the uh, Metropolitan Police Department, I think it was, or someone that time, I think as the department made leaps and bounds to how things appear in, I think as we move forward, I think, I think we'll get there. I don't think, you know, I, I think as a goal, I, I, I think we'll get there. Just keep doing what you're doing, and maybe that will make some changes too. Um, is it your uh, voice is for the public? Um, like I said, I'm not. I'm not. I, by no means, I can I say that I agree or disagree with what you're saying. Like that's what I mean. You know what I'm saying? Um, but. Uh, you might not be able to say that to us, but you can say that to other people in the same I mean, when you see people doing these things, you can make an issue. You can make the people that supposedly investigate you and have their own treatment. Make them actually police and make them hold people accountable when they do these sort of things. Yeah, and I, you know, it becomes my own. Oh, way. it's above my pay grade, and I can't do anything about it. You know, but but, but, but in, in the locker rooms, and I'm in the squad room, to a certain degree, it doesn't matter what I say, there's nothing I can do about it. Um, because we have a chain that we have to go through, and if in this chain situation has already been... Well, well, there's always the case of peer pressure. Every group has peer pressure, and if... If the cops had to believe, like you believe, that corruption is wrong, that police brutality is wrong, so, I mean, you could create that force within your own uh, squad. So you're saying there's, there's, there's the a people small, there. Well, they're not, they're not going to be real. I mean, they have, yeah, that, you, you're, you're, you're asking me what I can do. That's what I well, do. They're what, my voice. So. What you're saying is that there's a very small percentage of cops that you've got to And 
so if all the other cops that aren't doing those bad things got together and made an issue of those bad things that were done, instead of covering it up, or allowing the chain of command to cover it up, you can make real changes in the system. Well, if I believe, really expect from you guys, yeah. Yeah, if I believe that what they did was wrong, yeah. Um, um, you know, I, I've got a few instances where I've attended um, gatherings where there are off-duty police officers. And on more than one occasion, they say that they were bad, I found it. Um, well, there's been times I've, I've found them like that. And, you know, like, why, you know, if you believe this, then the public is really, you know, I wouldn't feel safe now with this guy. He could have a propensity um, uh, for violence or for talking about, uh, you know, what it is this was like, I bought him pretty danger to shoot him because it'd be easier. You know, and I, they, you know, I wasn't, they were known to that, you know, my views or anything, I was just observing. So, you know, I know that you guys, uh, I've, I've been in a safe situation, like, why did that person say that? See, now, I mean, so, when, uh, here's the problem. When you were in that situation, what do you feel like you were in that situation? Well, it wasn't nothing like, uh, if it was happening, yes, but if it wasn't, you know, if it said like a, a rude comment, I wouldn't. I mean, if it has a meaning behind what they're, the content of what they're saying, like if it's like, like a race topic or something like that, yes. But as far as like, you know, I don't like him or something like that, I probably... Oh, no, no, it would be an indication of their uh, mindset as to... Because you get a lot of people from the comments that they make, what their mindset is and the way they're going to behave. Yeah, they're talking about... (laughs) Or if a guy's always talking about, you know, uh, kicking the carpet in the face or, you know, that kind of you know, like, fuck them guys, that kind of get a guy and we keep them... Yeah, no, that's a concern, yeah. And these that, are the that, comments that, that I hear. Here's the thing. I don't want to be, I wouldn't want to work with someone like that. Because, uh, you get that, tainted that, also. Right. That'd be an issue for me. That could get me in, in, in hurt or in trouble. I'm not out here to do the wrong thing. I, I really know. You're probably talking to the, you know, the most, I feel level-headed, open-minded. First, and I, I try to be real open minded and people views and I try to look at it from their standards. You guys bring up a lot of good points. Um, but trying to express it from my point of view, I hope we can kind of see where we're going, but I'm just one person, you know, and I can't speak on behalf of the department. But I understand sympathy because, you know, there are certain guidelines that they tell you you've got to follow here. But, and then, you know, but they also bring you out here. <laughs> you, you know, you don't even have to tell us you do. <laughs> Yeah, but I honestly don't see a lot of that thing that you're talking about in the area that I work I, with. The I would encourage you to pay attention because I know about it. And I don't work in it. Yeah, so I'm talking about where I work and the thing that, and, and the, and the group of officers that I, I deal with. You, you know, I don't know if you go out to the valley trying to talk to different officers. No, well, I, I do go around the valley. I don't see anything. Um, it's, it's very publicly available. Any information that I brought up today is very publicly available. And I try to be, be honest, I, when, I, when I leave work, I try to leave work. That way. I don't, I don't try to bring it home. I have a family, you know, I, there's a lot of negative things that I see. There's a lot of negative things that, you know, happen. So, you, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of stuff on TV. Do you feel like this is you feel like they stress it up the job. I mean, do they provide any sort of ongoing counseling at the police department? If I continuously, especially so, you know, that is that I then start taking it out. And then it has to be replaced. So is it mandatory that you have to go through whatever services that the eye is? Or is it the incident has to occur? You see, no. Um, I, I reached out to the court help. So, depends on the officer. You know, some of the things, you know, I have seen what there is, I've reached out to the help. So, they're out there. Well, I, I mean, just on, on your side, the police side, you, you know, that the suicide of a police officer is kind of high 
and especially uh, since there wasn't a whole lot of services or at least wouldn't avail themselves to it because it would make them look weak in their eyes and their brothers uh, would. So, you know, but then you can see how this also leaves when guys are, have built up hostilities, they'll either hurt themselves, hurt their families, which is like another this. thing, and, like and the, the outside is the soldiers that go through, that go to war. Yeah. Uh, so they, they, they go through, you see so much negative, and, I, and that's probably why you get more uh, off the feedback from the officers when you try to talk to them, because it comes off like you guys are kind of negative towards the data, but I see where you're, where you're going at. Um, because we're out there, I mean, even if you didn't hear bad athletes that day, they really are trying, trying to help people, but with the problems that they don't get help with, whatever, you know, they're fine. They lead up, I mean, there's been times, I mean, you know, I should try to get him to be more of a person, you know, if I were in that situation, I mean, I don't know. It's a very stressful job. It's a very tough job. You have to try to feed everyone and try to do the right thing all the time. And it's hard to do. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys try to, you know, I, I just assume you guys try to do that every day, too. But you don't. Well, on everything we do, I mean, you know, like anybody else, you know, when I said you guys are in a unique uh, position, you're in a, in a position of authority, um, you know, you have the authority over citizens without weapons, um, you know, you have the ability to take lives, um, you know, as you're ready. Right, and all of that, you do, so when we come and we're concerned, uh, you know, about the escalation, of violence, you know, that police officers sometimes have towards the civilians. But I think know, that kind of comes back to there's a lot more civilians that are more aggressive towards us. I mean, look, they got... Well, there's a lot more civilians, I mean. Well, but, but, but look how aggressive they are to the police officers. I mean, they're murdering us. We had two that were murdered this past, this past year. They're out there sniping us. I mean... Well, there's a lot of night I mean, the statistics show has gone down over there. 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 It seems the statistics have shown it's gone down over the years. They just killed five cops in Las Vegas. How's that going down? Huh? There's five cops murdered in Las Vegas in the past four five years. Yeah, I'm talking throughout the United States. That number is way up. Overall. It's up from last year because it's a short in the it's still something like 40 percent below the average. Well, it's lower than 15 or something. Oh yeah, I should be zero. You just talked about, talk about murder being a, a topic, and now you're kind of saying that. Well, it's no, lower, but that big deal. Yeah. No, I'm not saying I mean, that. One, one person is highly valuable. Right. One person is highly valuable. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it doesn't. It doesn't matter who you are, what situation, life. I agree with that. Unfortunately, that's not the way that it happens in reality. And the, 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 the incredible difference between it is people that are murdering cops are all accountable. They're either dead or in prison. Cops are still out there murdering. <clears throat> One of them is advising other cops. One of them is his job now is to advise other cops that have shot people. And he shot three people. Right now, he's killed three people. Three people. He murdered Trayvon Cole while he was on his knees in the bathroom. He is now the official uh, PTA advisor to how people shoot people. Well, he's an expert on shooting. So, but so, I mean, if you look at the, the majority of the people, the perception of that is incredibly ridiculous. You couldn't find anybody else in the entire union who was five people. Well, you see how it looks, though. And um, well, I mean, I'm not sure what the percentages are of police officers who actually shoot. Uh, people who have shootings on their records, <clears throat> and for one off to shoot three people, I mean, three separate incidents. Um, statistical probability of this there being a, a young I mean, you know, the majority of police officers go through their whole career with never firing their weapon. One guy actually has three active shooting on his record. Um, I mean, that's kind of like getting at him, you know? Uh, it's just, and you just look odd. I mean, there's been a lot. There's, I, I mean, it's happened. I mean, I don't know what else. I agree um, across the board, there should be murder. Nobody should get murdered. But 
say um, the top 10 women last year, so who would have been better? Uh, uh, Jennifer Thomas, uh, Arlene, and Rachel Lindsay, and Tom. I didn't yeah. say that. I didn't say that. I'm not, just not, saying that the people that we encounter a lot more aggressive towards the putting the putting the But the actual history is really not. Yeah. You know, you got to talk about um, that. Why does it get top 10 gone really down? It's at the, one of the lowest points in the, in the history of the United States. Oh, it's like the 18th. Right? Um, um, uh, uh, what? At one of the lowest points in the United States. Right, the violence against the Yeah. Even, even what the 2013 was like the lowest since the 1800s. Yeah. yeah. The violence against the police officers. So, I, I know that, see, this is all about perception and the, the information. Yeah, perception. Uh, you guys are correct, you know, the citizens are out there. You know, it's getting tougher and, and then, tougher, but they're in the fact that you that impression that talking more you guys, you guys, you guys are, are, because we're doing our job and handling those, a lot of those situations without the bad outcome. There's every day, I can say every day I go, there's going to be so many encounters that it almost results in a altercation, and all I'm trying to do is help them. That part but, of the problem is, but, yeah, I mean, but, you guys create this perception that you're a war and you're a people. Well, that's not the part of the problem. That's not the part of the problem. Right, that we're like, like, that the civilians are, are ratcheting up, violence against police. Um, and the, the, two, the incident with the two officers in New York, which, I mean, the guy, I think, shot his girlfriend ahead of time. I mean, the guy was... I mean, the guy was... The guy was... The guy was... The guy was... Right, and it wasn't, you know, so it wasn't that a regular citizen was like, that's it, I'm, you know, fuck the peace uh, type of mentality. The guy was mentally ill and chose to have to shoot his own girlfriend. And, and the other point is that lack of accountability creates possibility in this show, which makes more likely those people that are on the edge and are violent and don't like cops are more likely to act out on that because of that lack of accountability. Yeah, and then and the other reason why the other good I'm sure is part of the system. That's why, another reason why it's your guys' is I haven't said it would be nice. Right. I don't know. We're just reiterating. Um, you know, it, it's just, it is. It's a, it's a tough world out there for all of us. I mean, none of us like uh, for every traffic stop being bad. It could escalate into something more. Um, I've had bad traffic stops. I, um, you know, I got a police officer, you know, tailgate me as I pulled over, tailgate me again, you know, to slow down and then pull me over for unjustified brain changes. Uh, I, I know you guys see that happen at the instant, but it's that type of behavior that makes it say, oh, wait a minute. No, um, when it happens to me... We're just a bigger spotlight, and so every little... Not, Every little yeah. detail, it, it gets brought out, and it's, sure. it's, and that's hard, it's, it's hard, hard to, to, it's hard to it's keep everyone accountable for all those things. Yes, Part of the reason for that spotlight is that lack of investigation. <laughs> that, okay, this guy must be included in the cat monster. That, that lack of accountability when the police don't investigate these things, then the citizens have to investigate. They have to investigate every case because the police aren't investigating these things. Yeah, we don't feel like justice is being terrible. The rubber stamp is kind of, you know, if the police can't investigate themselves, I mean, I think it's silly. I don't think any organization should be able to investigate themselves anyway. There should always be an outside that body of uh, independence that review this stuff. But, you know, because even when the uh, general organization that makes itself finds it, oh, everything is cool and, and uh, it's still suffering. Is it the guys taking care of themselves and protecting each other? So that's where, you know, it comes in with a lot of the issues. I and mean, as you see out there when people are just like, <laughs> I, just, we're coming, I mean, I'm coming from a place of like, where do you go, though? I don't get really the passion and, um, you know, that the minority communities get. I mean, I, I, well, or we say perceived um, harassment or perceived uh, additional attention um, in minority communities. So, from what I feel, you have been saying it's going to be ratcheted up more, well, but we will be out there and say, hey, hey, you know, we'll beef it up more as black. It's not like that. 
um, basically just pull up the crime stat, and there's a spike in crime over here, and we had a second call, we had a robber here, so like your best rate for me, that's when they go there, they go back right there. Now, then he goes back on to the account of the bar, and they have to be in the account of the house, they say it's a week, that's a picture of time. But I, that's not what I need to do. Because I'm right there. Right. Um, you know, the only thing I can do when the officer next to me is try to do what, you know, I uh, have a hope to do. That's to keep the community safe and protect you and save lives. Right. Um, well, no, we, we understand that aspect, well, but we want you to start. So, like, when you when you go in tomorrow, I have to speak in class. You know, you, you, and there's a fellow officer, and he said, you know, I met these guys, and this is, this is the protection that we have. You know, we really must try harder now to break that protection, to change that protection. Um, and we're, I said it's not true. You know, it's not true. You got it's well, not I mean, we're at work. You got to work. About, about, you know, well, the thing about it is, so you can come out there with your law, they have to say, you're allowed to uh, look into a case. <laughs> you're probably in a much better position to get those people um, and an example of when cops are there, the Santa gets to his murder, there's a 19 cop on the I think it's six of them there. They couldn't refuse to make any statement. They were all there, they saw exactly what happened, they refused to make any statement about it. And, and that's the sort of thing that the hostility, that distrust, and makes your job that much harder. Yeah. Well, yeah. Was, I mean, that was a bad situation. Well, you got 19 cops, and that only six makes statements. That shows any either willful, you know, disregard of the public, or, or just, you know, I, I can imagine what else would be. And it makes it difficult for us now. Is it what we try our best to try our best? And yet, it's like this happened. Well, I can say this. I mean, I roll my eyes a lot. I know what I'm saying. I see things, I'm like, roll my eyes, and, you know, we, we talk amongst people, and, you know, we try to make sure that it's done the right way, or we try to make sure it is, you know, to get down the proper way. I'm not saying I just sit back and don't say anything, because that's not the truth. Well, I, I mean, there's all something cases recently in the paper where <coughs> officers who have stepped forward are subject to a lot of in-house abuse. Um, you know, different uh, leaving rats on cars, so they call rats. Um, you know, being shunned and stuff. So I haven't heard anything or anything like that. Not saying I haven't heard it. And that's what they do with any anything. You're always going to have that peer pressure or whatever. Um, through my eight years, my experience, um, I haven't really come across any that. I'll say that. It's not going to happen tomorrow or whatever. Um, but I really try to look at I really try to look at the positive things. I mean, deal with a lot of negative. I really try to look at the positive things. I really think we're doing a good job. I see your point of view. And it is a big agency. It's going to take a lot of people to correct a lot of the issues. And, I don't know. Tough topic to talk about. To be honest. You know, absolutely. You know, there's a lot of issues here that you know we address. I mean, it's tough. Well, I don't know. Well, so I would encourage you not to say I can't do anything about it. It's just because somebody investigating something, they need to say they're doing a proper investigation. You should address it. Yeah. If I feel that it needs to, yes. If I feel, if I feel like you did your job, then I think yeah, I think yeah. And I would, and I think every other officer is probably good. But if they still went back to their given, that is the the proper way. <coughs> so that's true, I mean, I know you can't think for any other officer, but, you know, you, you, like, we talk about, like, 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 like,
I don't know anything. I don't know anything about that. Wow. I would. I would. I want to come to you. That was my coworker. I would find out about that. Well, then now that you're aware of it, right? Maybe. Exactly. That wasn't. They took the memo out. Especially advising guys not to be so honest. Because they took the door down. 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 And uh, Gillespie stopped it, and the reason he stopped it is because he didn't want it to become public. Not because, you know, he was innocent, because he didn't want people to know about it. And that's your higher up, right? I mean, and I know that's nothing you can do against the higher up. They're there. But now that you're aware of it, you know, you look with different eyes about the policies or the statements that are made, and oh, I wonder, you know, I want to observe the time. That's, that's our motto. You know, we're going to go and have you look a little differently at us, the community, and hopefully you'll go and try to open your fellow officer's eyes and say, you know what, this is our perception, um, you know, maybe, right, maybe we have to take care of this. You know, but the bad guys are doing it the other way. They're covering each other when they see totality. Um, it works the other way, too. The good guys come to check the other good guys to make sure that anybody who has to come forward is protected and not harassed. And that's what we expect to do again. Well, would you say when it comes to, like, uh, civilian citizens, um, word to conflict uh, with another officer, do you think it's policy or expectation to, to assume that the, that the person's lying? Or, I mean, if, it, if it's contrary to what the cop is or, or that. Every, every circumstance is different. I mean, it has to be, it has to depend on this person. For example, I had someone to be in my partner, but come to find out, that's all he does. He takes other lawsuits. So his whole purpose is to try to get money to make. So he had a motive to, you know, and, and all it was was a, a traffic uh, he had six other open cases for other little things like that, trying to get money from the property. He always represented them. So I think the circumstance is different. I don't, I think doing the job, do I take the work, the truth, right away, no. Like, you know, I have to kind of fill them out and what they're, what their motive is, or are they really concerned with it, you know, or are they just trying to vote, I don't know. I got to kind of go back to what you're asking again. Thank you. Well. I mean, um, I don't know, I've seen sometimes, like, uh, I don't know, like, to assume, I've seen police assume that uh, someone may be exaggerating or saying, like, you know, if this really happened, like, if saying that police report. I think, all the time, probably do assume, before actually getting the bat and stuff like that. Like, I assume that you guys hate the police, you know, because of the top block and the questions that you're asking. But now, like, I see where they kind of, you're kind of uh, concerned on behalf of the police you were going to represent you. Like, I'm going to hold it. I'm going to take that from you. Yeah. You don't have that trust. It's hard for us to represent you. Yeah. So, uh, I think over time, when you get complacent or you deal you know, with a, a certain element uh, of society, you, you get to, uh, like, okay, you look a little bit. And that's where it's tough. It makes the job harder where you have to step back, get your, your uh, balance, or get your... Uh, your bearing about who you are, about your purpose. It's a tough issue. Good job. What else? What kind of, you just always drove a truck? What other kind of work have you done? I've done a lot of work. I've done truck, heavy construction, um, general labor. And, uh, you know, I love writing, photography, financial uh, yeah. in general. And, uh, so, you know, 
I went to college, I got a degree in physical uh, education, originally was going to teach, you know, because I wanted to help kids like that, and then my past was kind of like this way, I figured I could do the same as this. What's your opinion? I can see you thinking. I'm just listening to you. Yeah. Well, my cousin was, I mean, um, he just became a cop again. He used to be about 20 years ago. Uh, my cousin in New Mexico, but, um, he was a teacher too before, so, you know, I know it's good and bad, so, obviously, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, I have to wait these good. You know, change the laws and how how uh, much you drive. I'm sure there's drivers out there that are driving more than they should. You know, it's everything. Everyone's going to push the limit. It's just a matter of, like, limits and holding accountability. What's that? I'm going from there. So what's your, do you talk now with your cousin then? Do you ever talk with him? Um, well, actually, lately, um, I haven't talked to him. Uh, my mother has a little bit, and, you know, she pays attention to the stuff that I, she's asked him questions about it. I don't know, he seems to not uh, want to say too much, oh, yeah. but, um, but I don't know, I mean, um, he, he deleted me from Facebook recently, maybe, maybe because of content, you know, I post some top block things, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm trying to be fair, which I can, so, you know, I, I understand him, I've had, I have to do with it, but. You know, I, I'm not, like, like, I don't post stuff just, again, you know, I have to talk to it and, uh, you know, just trying to hold them accountable. Um, you know, but, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I know, I believe he's good. <laughs> Who are you talking about? Yeah. Like, I'm going to Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he just, I mean, I hope. <laughs> but, yeah, I had a couple of topics. Oh, really? I mean, I, what? I took you a ride. A very good cop. I had a ride along on our kids. Oh, you guys are talking about me over there. Yeah. Here. <laughs> so, yeah, I went on a ride along when I was like eight years old or so. <laughs> yep. You ever been on a ride along? Uh, I had an uncle who was uh, you said do the choppers. Oh wow. I last year in a helicopter. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was just such a thing. I mean, I was back in the 70s, and I think before helicopters were down and they were today, now you got tons of helicopters and stuff. Do you know, I mean, I don't know if you'd be able to say anything, if you know anything about um, drones or using them or them buying them? No, that I heard it's gonna be, not, but yeah. it's not over like the not this year, um, <laughs> oh, the 4th of July. There was drones being flown over the strip, or a drone being flown over the stars, or just someone. I I can't imagine. I don't, I don't think we had them yet, because um, I think they're still trying to figure out, you know, if I was doing one right, stuff like that. I think you're supposed to test them, and I'll commission tasks. Well, like I said, the 4th of July, man, I was with people, and we were at one of the, um, there were these bridges. I'm going to say good small bars. I can't remember what they you know what Where I went in. But I mean, they thought it was UFO. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it did kind of look like UFO. Yeah. But they all take pictures. People like, do. Oh. They do. But I was shocked to see drones over the highway. Uh, yeah. 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 Private. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, it's going to be in uh, February 14th. Okay. It's going to be at the American Museum. Yeah. Right at there. Which, which month are we in? Uh, why don't you hear that? Memorial. I have been excited. Yeah. All right. Just come over and check it out and see, you know, what we're doing and how we're helping with, with uh, help with the you know, homeless people. Um, maybe it's something that you guys can come over to reach out to some different homeless folks. Oh, we we know, like, you know, Meredith, we're familiar with Meredith, we've been, um, you know, we work with Food Not Bombs, uh, it's an organization that, you know, and there's a lot of controversy within it, um, you know, we have a different, uh, mindset, um, you know, if you're hungry, we feed you that. Well, we do that at the you know, right, you know, we, we don't require, you know, like IDs, and we don't, no, we don't, and, um, well, certain, certain groups, you know, we try to show up and stuff and... Well, this, like, like I said, this is, uh, 
we're, we're not there to run the lead project. We have another uh, lady that actually is doing that for us. We're, we're, we're literally there to go to the center, to go to the control, um, and we promote the home and whatever organization you are, you can get it however you get it. Yeah, I think I think I read about this one. Um, they set up hands so the organization set up for yeah, the kids. Yeah, they have a label, they set up booths or whatever. Right, um, right. Some people in the world and some people in the IT, so they have to find like underwear and they have to do like last time. They had like a big pot of chicken and all that and they had a little money. They would try to get like dry dishes too so they would want to make it in the Right, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a huge uh, stance of, of homeless kids, they kind of put homeless, they can homeless, these guys who are taking out, or in and out. Yeah, but what else is it's kind of what it's involved in, we're also taking, like, um, help us take them back to come out, or just come out, 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 yeah, and, and they they appreciate it. Uh, all the homeless they appreciate it. And it's like a positive thing. But instead of going down there and you know hunting them up or doing you know, something stupid, you know, because you know they're acting. Well, I mean, you seem to be really. I mean, you seem to care about the history. Um, there's a program called Housing First, and it's going to be uh, starting here. That this gentleman is uh, pushing for. I think he's done tremendous things. I went to a seminar. Uh, the guy that they're it's doing it in Utah. We actually work with the, the yeah. chief uh, of Salt Lake City. Yeah, the house. Oh, okay. So we yeah, actually came out actually this past week. So we're trying to work oh, with him as well. Right, that's, 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 that's the gentleman I met. So you see that there's, there's other methods and yeah. traditional ideas about what helps the homeless or keeps them homeless and maybe not the uh, proper view of it, considering that the program is so successful and it's a complete turnaround of what is always done before. Yeah, no, so, that's why I said you know, yeah. we're working on things like that, but it's time to you know, get some of the funding, get the right people set in place to get, to get this going. All right, guys. All right. We had a good one. Yeah. Hopefully, there's something to think about. You have more something to think about for sure. All right. Thank you. 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 Huh? Oh, the bookstore. Let me see. Oh, that bookstore. You know, you can see, I don't think it'll last three weeks in the town. But... Oh, well. That's <laughs> the recording.